Hello everyone. This is our practice exercise B in our module. So in the previous video, we're able to discuss already or demonstrate how do we solve the items or the, um, pro the pro problems given with the practice exercise A. So we are going to talk about the practice exercise B for this video. We might be using some of the important concepts or concerns in uh, the discussion of the previous uh, uh, mentioned in the previous video, so you might want to check them out before proceeding here. In number one, we would like to solve for E. The only difference between this expression with any of the expressions in practice exercise A is that the intended variable here in the given literal equation is expressed as an exponentiation. Or in short, it has an exponent of greater than or not equal to one. Because if you only have an exponent of one, then it would be similar to what is what has happened in practice exercise A. Either way, let's just try to, or nevertheless, let's just try to use the same processes. First, we need to remove here the six, which is actually the coefficient for this side. Divide it because six and E squared is separated by multiplication. So the reverse operation of multiplication is division. We divide by six so that we can cancel that out. Properties of equality tells us to do the same thing on the other side. So our next expression is actually a, a over six is equal to E squared. We would like to use here the symmetric property so that we could come up with an expression wherein our intended variable is placed on the left-hand side of the equation for easier understanding. So let's try to apply the symmetric property, interchanging both sides without changing the signs nor values for the given uh, variables or coefficients. So you have here e squared is equal to a over 6. However, we are looking for an expression or a derivation of this little equation we're in. We're looking for the value for e. But here, in this uh, exp the latest expression that we have, it's still expressed as e squared. So some of you might say, I could divide it by 2, sir. So I could cancel that out. This is incorrect because we, uh, 2 here is not equivalent is not a numerical coefficient of e. Earlier, when we talked about 6e e squared, we divide both sides by 6 because 6 here is a numerical coefficient. And, and since it, the operation separating 6 and e squared is multiplication, so we do the reverse operation of division. But e here is not a numerical coefficient. Rather, it's an exponent. So how do we remove that exponent there? Think about that exponentiation is the reverse, uh, is a um, uh, repetitive uh, multiplication. And its reverse operation is actually taking the principal root. The principal root separate, uh, opposite by uh, e squared or an exponentiation with an exponent of two is the square root. If it's e cubed, so we are going to use cube root. If it's e to the power of 4, we are going to use 4 root. Because by this, by doing this, we could already cancel this out. We have removed the, uh, the principal root or the square root sign. And we are also going to remove the ex exponent here. The square root's property of equality tells us that if we're going to take the root of, of one side, take the root as well of the other side. Do not just take the root of a nor the root of six, since both sides is what we are going to take the uh, we're going to apply the principal roots. It should take the whole quantity. So in this case, the final expression is that e is equal to the square root of a over six. Now there are still some important processes to be done when you talk about. Um, radical expressions, those expressions with principal roots, but as of this level, it's okay for us to have this expression. So the value for E in this expression is the square root of A over 
six. And by the way, before I forgot, this formula, this is a formula for the surf surface area of a cube, wherein the cube has six uh, fa uh, faces, uh, six square faces. That's why it has six e squared. Let's proceed to number two. Well, number two is not a necessary, uh, 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 not necessarily a formula in any of the subject areas. This is what uh, we have made this. Uh, I just made this formula or literal equation just to support understanding a number one. So in number two, we're looking for k. Here, we're not going to divide any more both sides by any value. Unlike in number one, since we have an exp a numerical coefficient of your six, that's why we divide both sides by six. Here, in number two, the numerical coefficient of this is just one. So by dividing both sides by one, it will not affect the whole expression. So we may not do that one. Instead, we could just simply apply here the symmetric property already, and we will have k squared is equal to 3b. Okay, we have k squared is equal to 3b. And the next, since we're looking for k, not k squared, we take the root of both sides. And what root? We're going to use the square roots as the opposite of an exponent of 2. Take the root of both sides. Therefore, the final result for number two, is we have k is equal to square root of 3b. This is now the more acceptable. Uh, this is now the correct answer for derivation of this literal equation where we look for k, not for 3b. So this is, uh, this is uh, don't number one and number two are similar in the sense that they have exponentiation. For number three and number four, they are similar because they, are, they have now separators which are in the forms of either addition or subtraction. As a reminder, we cannot apply here the magic triangle. Let's proceed to number three. You might say, sir, I will do this. I will apply the magic triangle as mentioned in our module in practice exercise A, and I will place here A, and then you have M and N. And then, sir, since I'm looking for N, I will cover N, and then I will have that. So my result, sir, is that N is equal to A over M. Again, this is not possible because the operation separating M and N is actually subtraction. So we cannot use the magic triangle here and is therefore this result is incorrect. So let me just remove that so that there would be no more confusion. Again, I just placed that one to make a point that it's incorrect to use magic triangle for number three as well as in number four. So let me remove this. So what should be done for number three? Since we're looking for N, this side here, the right-hand side, we should make it a point where it a point where in this side only contains n. Therefore, we are going to remove m on both sides. And how do we remove m? Again, not divide. We are going to subtract m both sides. Why subtract? Sir, I think I need to add both sides by m because the operation separating them is subtraction. Again, do not fall in love with that uh, proposition. Look at the sign of the item you are removing. M is a positive, uh, the coefficient of M here is positive one. If you're just going to add another M, it will not remove the M the variable here, but it will, it will just increase it. So we are going to remove both sides by M. So what will happen, happen here, you have M minus N, and we are going to sub, uh, sorry, that's N, and we are going to subtract m. So that m minus m here will become 0. Again, we subtract that both sides by m so that this expression of m here and the thing that you have play, uh, uh, added or subtracted will become 0. Like the reason for removing m is so that we could actually locate only n. OK? so. Applying it here also allows us to apply the same thing on the other side. So 
let me just move this a little bit farther. So I could apply here A and still minus M. Minus M, minus M. So we have here this expression, A, sorry, A minus M is equal to negative of N. So we, we may apply here the symmetric property and come up with negative N is equal to A minus M. Again, symmetric property only allows us to interchange size without changing the sign nor the values of the coefficients. But again, this is not yet final because we're looking for N, not negative N. Similar earlier, we're looking for E, not E squared. We're looking for K, not K squared. So we need to come... Uh, come up with a process so that this negative n will become a positive n. Now, you, some of you might say, I will divide, sir, by negative 1. That's a correct process anyway. Okay, so I could remove that. And I'm going to divide it both the other side as well. That's a correct process. I don't have any problem with that. The only concern here is that for some of us who, who, who might be confused with what will happen here next, because this is a binomial and we divide it by a negative number. What will happen here? For some of you who are ad advanced, you, you, it, you may actually apply uh, here a, 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 a specific process to come up with a simplified form for this. But to for some of us and probably most of us who might have problems with simplifying this, let me give you another option. Instead of dividing both sides by negative one, we could multiply both sides by negative one. Negative times negative will become positive one n or simply n. Take note that we div multiply both sides by a negative number. Okay. This is actually easier to look at. Okay. Sorry. Easier to look at. Or let me place it on the other side para di masyadong, uh, not, uh, di masyadong mahirap. Okay, so we have here negative 1. Okay. This is actually easier to look at than the this expression with a negative sign denominator. Why? Because we simply need to apply here the distributive property, distribute, distribute. So this is actually equal to the expression n, positive now, is equal to negative 1 times a is negative a. And then negative 1 times negative m, negative times negative is become positive, and you have here m. So the result for this expression here, when we derive or we, we would like to solve for n, is n is equal to negative a plus m. Or some of you might say, n is equal to application of the uh, the n is equal to application of the community property for addition you have positive m plus negative a just uh, community property and then can be simplified better as m break that up minus a both of these are acceptable for number three Take a look at the process. It's a little bit longer and probably um, a little bit confusing. You just need to review the processes involved in solving linear inequalities and master it, practice it to master it rather. In number four, our last item here, we're solving for y. But when you look at the given expression, please notice that y is present on both sides. So again, our goal is to solve for y. So you would like one side, preferably the left side, contains the variables y. And those items or coefficients or expressions without variables y must be removed from the left side so that it could be up, appear on the right-hand side of the equation. So let's just, uh, how do we do that, sir? First, we remove here x because you would like y on the left-hand side. Similar to what happened here, we will have x minus y, we will subtract both sides by x because x here has a positive numerical coefficient. x minus x becomes zero, and that's it. No more x in this side. And then 
we apply the same thing on the other side, three minus two y minus x. And then our expression will follow to be negative y is equal to three minus two y minus x. Since we are now assured that the left-hand side contains y, let's check the right-hand side. Since the right-hand side also has y and you would like it to not appear here but on the other side, let's remove it here by, okay, since 2y here is a negative value, a negative, a negative expression, so we are going to add both sides by 2y. So that negative 2y plus 2y becomes 0 and y will not appear here anymore. On the other side, it's negative y, and you will add here plus 2y. Simplify it, negative one plus two is positive one, one y, or simply just simply write y is equal to, again, this can be canceled out. You have three minus x. As you can see, we have now solved, the intended variable y, which is actually equal to three minus x. Again, for number three and number four, they might be a little bit of confusion, but uh, but you need just need to simply review the processes, uh, the other proper, the properties of equality, and then practice so that we could actually uh, um, master the skill. So again, in number one and number two, there is an inclusion of an exponentiation. And number three and number four, we now involve operations, uh, our operators, addition and subtraction as separators for the variables. So this is it for practice exercise B. Please review and answer it on your own so that you could master the skill. Thank you very much for watching.